The banking fraud involving a total of 40 billion yuan in deposits at a number of village banks in Henan province has made hundreds of thousands of Chinese bank customers angry and the rest of China sleepless. The Chinese regime deflected the bank's accountability by attributing the scandal to illegal fundraising and some bad actors' criminal behavior. This would avoid insurance payouts by the government. But where are people's deposits? How was the money embezzled? And how corrupt are China's banks? Hi everyone, I'm Lei. Welcome to Lei's Real Talk. So something unusual happened recently at the village banks in Henan. After ignoring their customers' basic rights for over two months, two village banks suddenly resumed online transactions briefly, allowing some customers to withdraw money. On June 26, the Kaifeng New Oriental Village Bank resumed online banking briefly around noon, while the bank's website said that online banking was suspended. The Chinese media outlet Phoenix Finance reported the next day that online banking opened for about 40 minutes. Within that window, some lucky customers could get money, and the highest amount was 800,000 yuan by a person from Shanghai. Some people didn't finish their transactions fast enough and received a system message saying transaction correction, which means that the bank canceled the withdrawal. The same drama occurred at Yuzhou New Mingshen Village Bank a week earlier. The bank's online system resumed operations at 2 a.m. in the morning and lasted for an hour. This set up a storm online, and people questioned why the banks resumed online banking briefly and then shut it down again. Some Chinese believe that it was to allow certain privileged customers to be able to withdraw money. After all, the massive blanket shutdown has angered many people, some may be VIPs. People speculate that the banks notify special customers about the window of time to withdraw money. We cannot verify if this was the reason, but the incident brings up the question of whether people's money is still in the bank system or not. This is a key question because the government has claimed that people have put their money in an illegal fundraising channel, implying that it's not a standard bank product and won't be covered by deposit insurance. Secondly, the authorities would like people to believe that the money is gone due to embezzlement. So if we can prove that the money is indeed in the banking system, then the banks have no reason at all to deny people access to it. Plus, if the money is in the bank, it's a legitimate bank product that should be covered by the insurance. I think the customer's deposits are still in the system. First, when people made their initial deposits years or months ago, the transactions were recorded and people received bank receipts and could access their money in the system. If the deposits were illegally harvested and deposited in fake accounts circulating outside the banking system, like some Chinese media claim and like the authorities would have people believe, bank customers wouldn't have access through normal banking channels. They wouldn't accrue interest, for example. Also, the fact that people previously were able to transfer money into and out of their accounts as a bank deposit means the money has stayed within the banking system. Secondly, it's impossible that the perpetrators illegally transfer the money from people's deposit accounts into a fake account. We know that the five Henan village banks have absorbed more than 30 billion yuan in online deposits, which is the money now in dispute. But the Xuchang Rural Commercial Bank, which is the common shareholder of the village banks and which is tied to the perpetrators who embezzle the money, only had 14 billion yuan in total assets as of the end of 2020. For the Xuchang Bank to illegally transfer twice the amount of its total assets from five local banks and not be caught is difficult. It will require extensive collusion by the clearing and finance departments of both the Xuchang Bank and the village banks. Plus, the clearing system of China's central bank would have caught the abnormal transactions. Therefore, the customer's money is most likely still in the systems. The thieves couldn't have embezzled money directly from depositors' accounts. They most likely stole the bank's money through fictitious loans, since this is the most common type of Chinese banking fraud. 
The company that's at the center of this scandal is the Henan New Wealth Group, and the person who controls the company is Lü Yi. It's said by Chinese media that Lü holds a Cyprus passport and has fled to the United States with the stolen money. He controlled and owned shares of a number of municipal merchant banks, agricultural banks, and village banks, including the five Henan village banks involved in the scandal. His approach to obtaining loans was this: he used the equity of Bank A as collateral to take out loans from Bank B, and vice versa. In 2017, he collaborated with Cai Guohua, the former chairman of Hengfeng Bank, and obtained a 3.5 billion yuan loan. In November 2020, Cai was charged with embezzlement, misappropriation of public funds, bribery, and illegal issuance of loans. Last August, he received a death sentence that was suspended for two years. Let's take a look at Cai and his Hengfeng Bank. To help us understand what might have happened at the Henan Village banks, Hengfeng Bank has 18 subsidiaries and 306 branches nationwide, with roughly 1 trillion yuan in total assets. It is one of the 12 national joint stock commercial banks approved by the China Banking Regulatory Commission, and the only national commercial bank licensed in Shandong Province. From 2015 to 2016, using his position as bank chairman and the secretary of the bank's party committee, Cai Guohua transferred 4.8 billion yuan in bank funds, in the form of trust loans, to a private company that he controlled. In 2017, Cai authorized bank staff to issue 3.5 billion yuan worth of loans to projects that didn't meet loan requirements. Cai assisted eight organizations in obtaining bank loans, and accepted more than 1.2 billion yuan in bribes in return. The CCP's Central Commission for Discipline Inspection said that Hengfeng Bank had become Cai's personal ATM. During his tenure as chairman, he spent an average of 400,000 yuan or $62,000 a day for personal expenses, including mahogany furniture. His daughter's clothing, the hiring of bodyguards, and a private jet for overseas shopping sprees, and he received reimbursement for all of it. On May 14, 2016, the Huaxia Times dropped a bomb by exposing that senior executives of the Hengfeng Bank collectively embezzled more than 100 million yuan of public funds through the Bank of East Asia in Hong Kong. Chairman Tsai got 38.5 million yuan. Bank President Luan Hongtai got 20 million, Vice President Bi Jifan got 18 million, and other executives got different amounts. The lowest being 8 million yuan. The bank denied it. One bank executive eventually provided evidence against Tsai. It led to Tsai's downfall. He was captured at Shanghai Airport when he tried to leave China in 2017. Now coming back to the Henan Village banks, I think Lü Yi, the man who allegedly held a Cyprus passport and fled to the U.S. with the money, might have embezzled money through fake loans from the village banks by colluding with bank executives. In other words, he appropriated the bank's money, not the depositor's money. The depositor's money, in theory, is still there, but the banks are using the depositor's money to cover up for the losses from their collusion. A Chinese told this story, which I found interesting. Once upon a time, there was a corrupt official who was clueless about running his government. He spent recklessly, and his administration ran out of money. While searching for money, he saw that the pawn shop next door was full of valuables. So he had an idea. He said to the shop owner, "How about you and I split these valuables? You take one third, and I take two thirds." You take your money and run. I'll tell everyone that you stole everything, and I'll pretend to catch you. The pawn shop owner left with a third of the assets and was never caught, and the official got money to spend again. Is there a similarity between this story and the Henan case? Lü Yi seemed to have plenty of time to take care of his exit plan before leaving China. Lü dissolved his new fortune group in February. And the village bank stopped withdrawals in April. China's Hexun.com reported that 
Liu left for the United States after cooperating with the authorities' investigation into Cai Eshen, former vice chairman of China's Banking Regulatory Commission. Cai Eshen was formally arrested on February 10th. Around the same time, Liu dissolved his company and left China. Is the timing just a coincidence? Some people suspect that the officials waited for Liu to transfer the money and leave China before filing a case against him. We probably won't know the truth. People say this is only the tip of the iceberg, but Henan, without a doubt, is a place plagued with financial fraud and calamity. You can check out my video on wheat and garlic for houses offered by real estate developers in Henan. Yes, you heard it right: wheat and garlic. For background information on the banking crisis in Henan, you can watch my other video. That's all for today. Thank you.